Hello chess friends, this is King's Executor and I am giving you a very interesting and legendary game between Viktor Korchnoi and Mijo Udovcic from 1968, played in Leningrad. And Viktor Korchnoi wasn't only an expert of the French with the black pieces but with the white pieces as well. And after d4, e6, of course we could have seen something like a queen pawns game, but Korchnoi uh, having the white pieces transposed back to the French, and uh, his uh, move was the Tarash variation here with knight d2. Um, maybe you might not know this var variation why the knight to c2 and not to c3. Well, if you play knight c3, you give your opponent the opportunity to play the winner wa variation and after e5 because the pawn wasn't defended anymore c5 a3 takes takes knight c6 and so on um, the terrace variation uh, kinda doesn't allow bishop b4 here because of course there can be played the move c3 kicking the bishop and the d4 pawn will get under pressure so being able to play c3 afterwards and uh, the knights this way so they both defend with the pawn here the, the pawn on d4 is the most solid system against the French Knight f6 is the uh, by far the main move here. e5, knight fd7, and c3 is the first step. c5, and now uh, knight g to f3. This is the deviation. Um, the normal tarash would be bishop d3 first, so that knight doesn't block in a bishop, and then the knight comes here. Knight c6, knight e2, queen b6, applying pressure to d4, knight f3. Now you see three pieces are defending what uh, two pieces are attacking, basically. But in this position, uh, bishop d3, d3 wasn't played, but rather the Korchnoi gambit. Of course, um, Kochnoi having the white pieces introduced this gambit, and um, I think this is maybe even the first game of his doing that. And uh, the in the next move, moves, White will not be able to hold the d4 pawn, and this is a very interesting approach, and I want to bring it to your attention. Knight c6, bishop d3 and queen b6 and now you see it's only two pieces of white defending uh, what two pieces are attacking uh, plus the black pawn castles and now you see how black wins the pawn but the idea of this uh, gambit with white is to gain time on the queen and get a very quick development of course the queen can go to g4 or b4 um, or move on this uh, diagonal but in every case you can gain time on the queen queen b6 was Udovcic's move and queen a4 to stop a knight coming to c5 a knight to c5 would uh, gain time on the bishop, which is very um, important, attacking the king side. So, queen a4 to stop that. Queen b4, a good move, trying to exchange off the white active queen. So we retreat, and we're still gonna gain time on the queen. So that's no loss of time h6 why h6 the bishop wants to 
let's drop that move move back come to e7 eventually uh and black <coughs> black wants to castle sorry and um black doesn't want to allow an exchange of bishops so h6 to prevent this bishop d2 gaining time on the queen queen b6 rook a c1 and now you see the Kochnoi Gambit uh, is nice because White here in this position developed five pieces and Black only two. You could consider this the third piece being developed by opening up uh, with these pawn moves. But this bishop has to move still, so black can castle. So I would not consider this piece developed in this position. B bishop e7 here, and queen back to a4. Well, what if black castled here? If black castled, uh, you have different moves. You have different approaches. The least you have is takes and takes. And uh, the only move keeping black on the board here is bishop b4. Let's uh, give black another move if rook c7 queen b5 exchanging of the queens and that will give white a very big advantage so black suffers from problems here castling is not a very good option so queen d8 first to make castle possible rook c2 doubling on the c file and now the king still seems not to be very safe on the king side when he would castle so he played king f8 here well let's assume black castles here then queen g4 would be very strong threatening uh, bishop takes h6 so king h8 to prevent this but then queen h5 renews the threat to take there and eventually mate on h7 and if f5 is maybe the only move then takes works anyway takes check and now not queen takes e6 check rather check and now you can imagine a rook on h3 would be devastating so rook c3 first and now, if queen e8 to exchange of que uh, queens, check, and knight g5. And if this knight is taken, check, and on king h7, you can take this with check and mate very soon, or win at least a lot of material. And instead, if king f7, then bishop e2 mating with the bishop and queen. And if rook h8 to prevent this, check anyway. This has to be taken. And now you see uh, white can exchange of uh, pieces, uh, the queen even, or check still. Yeah, that's very nice. So, castling in this position is a wrong idea in my opinion. King f8 is a reasonable approach. The rooks are doubled by Korchnoi and knight b6 trying to liberate black's cramped position. Queen g4. Of course you want your queen on that flank where the opposite king is bishop d7 
and bishop a5 pinning the knight. So you see the gambit achieved two things. Firstly, the king has no uh, good sanctuary. And secondly, black lacks development, especially with his uh, heavy pieces. Um, black lacks counterplay and white has a very strong initiative and these positions are advantageous for white and uh, this all this just for one pawn rook c8 takes and bishop b4 now black cannot uh, escape from exchanging off the valuable bishop g6 to give the king a square on uh, g7 and make this rom uh, dormant rook working one day. Queen h4, a very picturesque move. Of course, the bishop is pinned to the king. So, g5, and I cannot understand this move. That pawn was taken. Maybe, um, I don't know. Maybe black was uh, relying on, uh, on, yeah, on bishop takes. But this is not working for the same reason, for the same move, which is done later by and I want to show it to you later, not now. King e8 was black's reply. Let's just drop back. If king g8, then bishop takes, bishop, queen takes, and knight f3, exchanging of queens. This would be the way for black to equalize the game. So, King g8 would have been the move here. But black played king e8. And this does a whole lot of makes a whole lot of difference. Check. Bishop d7. And now I want you to stop the video and spot the move which uh, made Korchnoi famous for being a very strong attacker, I think for the first time in his career. Okay, the marvelous move is knight takes e6, attacking the queen on d8, and threatening all sorts of checks. Well, what if bishop takes here. Can you find it? It is mate. So this is the first point. The bishop cannot take the knight, of course, it's pinned. So either the pawn takes the knight or the queen retreats. Pawn takes is the best move here for black. And now Korchner played check on h5, king f8, and of course bringing the last piece into the attack. Well, this bishop is attacked, but you see, because of this diagonal and this uh, check coming, there's th a threat, uh, um, there's a threat of mate, so this bishop cannot be taken, there's no time. Rook h7 was black's try. Queen g6 by Korchnoi attacking the rook and also looking at the pawn on h6. Rook g7 was black's move. And Korchnoi took this pawn, pinning the rook. And black took this bishop. And after rook g3... Udovcic resigned to Korchnoi. Let's just drop back 
In this position, the rook is attacked. Rook to f7 was a better try according to the engines. Check. Check. And now bishop e2 is the move which is winning for black. If bishop c6 to give the king a square, of course you see how nice this bishop is bearing down the dark squares, then bishop h5 is the least you have. You have even better moves. So this explains rook g7 takes takes and rook g3. Let's just summarize the game because it's an interesting opening uh, repertoire to have or to build. The Tarash variation, kicking the knight, c3, to give the bishop on, sorry, to give the bishop a retreat square and after this you see this is the standard Tarash, but the very active and dynamic way to play against the French is this Korchnoi Gambit. And Korchnoi shows us really the nice way with knight f3 and bishop e3 next if the uh, queen doesn't move. Um, having devastating uh, effects if, the, if black misplays. Blaze has to play very accurately. Queen a4 now to pin the knight. And uh, if the queen wouldn't uh, offer th the exchange, then bishop e3 next. And for the queen, taking on b2 would be a very silly idea. For example, let's go this way. This was the game continuation. And bishop e7, queen a4 again. And now is, let's assume that in this position black uh, would think that he would be able to take this pawn. Then rook c7 is killing. Queen a3 is the best move according to the engines. Then queen c2, knight b6 and bishop b5 is very strong. And afterwards knight d4. If bishop takes, then knight takes, attacking the queen, queen a4, rook takes, and queen check, check, at least winning the rook, or even more. Let's just go back to this position. If rook d8 here, then you see the knight's effect very soon. After a move like a6 takes, 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 and castles isn't possible here. So black suffers from um, from lack of possibilities here, especially if he takes such a pawn. So let's just continue. Uh, black moved the queen back, being able to castle afterwards and king f8 rook f c1 b6 knight b6 sorry queen g4 and pinning this knight this rook was taking the only active piece prob uh, I guess bishop b4 pinning the valuable bishop g6 queen h4 attacking that bishop. Of course, um, well, it's very uncomfortable here. g5 was played, takes, and king e8 was answered by check, and this crushing move, knight takes e6. Pawn took, queen check, and the rook lift to kill black. Rook h7, che uh, no check. Attacking the rook, takes, and after bishop takes, Udovcic resigned to Korchnoi. I hope you liked the game. Please comment, subscribe, and like the video if you did. 
and play the Kochno Gambit yourself in the Terrace variation with Knight G to F3 instead of to E2. Thanks. <laughs>